So if you've been watching the channel for a little while, you'll have seen me do a few things to power an Amiga using USB-C. One of my first attempts was this little contraption, which is basically a USB-C PD to 12 volts connected to a Pico ATX power supply that's had its connector removed and has been wired directly to the output to the Amiga. This works quite well. Form factors relatively big. Recently, my bench power supply gave out the magic smoke and is no more. That really gave me the catalyst to push the button on this project that's been on the back burner for quite some time. Born from wanting to provide Matt from Retro Sega Dev something that was fit for purpose for his Amiga 500 Plus that I'd resurrected from the dead. Initially looking at using my internal version of the ATX power delivery power supply combination, I was beginning to realize that there might actually be some heat and airflow concerns around that particular design. Changing my sights back to the external power supply and this original black box, I wanted to do an iteration of this, but in a smaller form factor and one that has a slightly better thermal design and I finally settled on this little beauty. It's a very small aluminium extrusion case in a very fetching orange, which is a little bit of a departure from my normal purple. But don't despair, those of you who love the purple PCBs will not be disappointed. This whole process was based around building a PCB that was small enough to fit exactly in this form factor. And it's been kicking around as a project for quite a while, while other things have taken precedence. So this nice purple PCB needs quite a lot of surface mount components and that's going to be a little bit of a build process. It's a fairly compact board, possibly not as compact as my recent Gotek clone, but fairly compact nevertheless. And it'll be a test to my design and component sourcing to whether this will actually fit inside this case because the dimensions are very tight. Basically, the build process is going to be smallest components first, and then moving on to the ICs, and then some of the bulkier surface mount components like the inductors and capacitors last. And somewhere in the mix, I'll be fitting the power LED and the USB-C connector. So now's the time to sit back and watch me get this built, I guess. If you needed a power supply for your vintage computer, you can probably find that on PCBWay's shared projects. They can provide prototype PCBs for as little as $5, and their ordering process is pretty simple. In the case of shared projects, you just add it to your basket and choose the quantity that you require. Five or 10 will usually fall under the $5, as long as the project is small enough. And with really small projects, you can occasionally get more. PCBWay also offer 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and CNC machining services and all of this is available at pcbway.com. Thanks PCBWay for sponsoring this video.
Now we have the thing actually assembled, all we need is a switch. So let's plug this in and see what it does. Honestly, to my surprise, this thing actually works flawlessly, or at least as far as voltages go. The final test will be getting it into the case and testing it with the Amiga. A little bit of finagling and, and it does fit in the enclosure without too much of a problem. Simple power on test shows that this actually powers an Amiga. But we've got the board flopping around inside here so I'm going to make some end caps. And that's a matter of very crudely putting a hole for the USB-C and the LED and a space for the switch and a rudimentary cable relief. I'll be doing a little test at the end to see what this actually pumps out as far as heat. And that might surprise you, because it did me. All that built and in place, it's uh, time to test this for real. So I'm going to run it through its paces by sitting and using this as an excuse to play Roadcraft for about half an hour to see what temperatures this actually gets up to. And to my surprise, this actually leveled out at about 48, 49 degrees, so under 50, which is way below what I was expecting it to run at. My expectations were mainly based on watching Rob Smith Dev's disassembly of the PowerShark, a similar kind of solution, but one that's a more commercial offering. That was running at about 75 degrees when it was going full tilt, and about 50, 55 degrees, or something of that nature at relatively normal operating amperage. The fact that this is under 50 degrees when it's running the A600 is a promising sign. If you found this video in any way entertaining or informative, then please consider clicking like and try subscribing to my channel as it doesn't cost you anything, but really does help me out. And in the meantime, why don't you check this out next?